Mr. Mary, with the recent uh, crackdown in Azerbaijan on the civil society activists and particularly U.S. funded NGOs uh, and journalists, uh, the tensions between Azerbaijan and the U.S. have been on the rise. Some are speculating that uh, this may be a, a precursor to Azerbaijan reorienting itself toward Vladimir Putin's Russia. Uh, do you see any link between the developments, domestic developments inside Azerbaijan and the overall geopolitical picture? Well, it's hard for me from this distance to judge the motives of the people who make policy in Baku. But what I think is certainly true is that not just in recent months, but in recent years, uh, the government of Azerbaijan has shown an increasing unwillingness to accommodate uh, even the most minimal considerations of American uh, sensitivities, uh, doing things in Azerbaijan, uh, which will certainly offend not only the, the United States government, the administration of President Obama, but very, very important people in the American Congress. Uh, I know this may not seem important uh, in, in Baku, uh, where they are continually being told how important Azerbaijan is and how much we value the relationship and, and so forth. But for a great power like the United States, these kinds of aggravations tend to build up. Uh, and over time, uh, there, will, there will come a point where there will be a reckoning. Uh, as you know, the United States has given particular importance to the relationship with Azerbaijan because of our engagement uh, in Afghanistan and uh, the use of, uh, of Azerbaijan as one of a number of uh, transit countries in the so-called Northern Distribution Network. But as the American role in Azerbaijan uh, declines, that, uh, that role for Azerbaijan declines as well. Uh, and increasingly, as we see tensions between the United States and Russia uh, and the reduction in other issues uh, of importance to the United States in, in the Caucasus and the Black Sea region uh, and the Caspian region in general, uh, I think the day will come uh, when Azerbaijan may find that its importance to the United States is really much less than it thinks it is. Some would have anticipated that in light of the situation in Ukraine with the Russian invasion uh, of that country, the Azerbaijan leadership uh, would seek closer ties integration with the West, with the United States, and perhaps loosen its grip on the domestic uh, front. But we're not seeing that. Uh, do you believe that this may have to do something with the fact that the Azerbaijan government uh, fears U.S. or the West more than it fears Moscow, Russia, which has invaded two of its neighbors in, in recent years? I will only give you two thoughts on that. The first is that in recent years, I think we've seen almost no connection between Azerbaijani domestic policy toward political opposition, freedom of the press, uh, freedom of assembly, so forth, uh, and its external policies. Uh, those two things seem to have a very little connection, which is to say that the government in Baku uh, doesn't really feel inhibited in its uh, domestic behavior uh, by its relations with external powers, including the United States. The second is I think there is probably a sense in Baku that Armenia uh, has now become so completely compromised in its relations with Moscow uh, that uh, to some degree Baku uh, doesn't need to make uh, any kinds of compromises uh, with the West because it's not in competition with Yerevan uh, in terms of seeking favor in Washington or Paris or, or, or other Western capitals because uh, the Armenians have so completely thrown in their lot uh, with, with Moscow. Uh, in this regard, I think uh, in Azerbaijan, they probably feel they now have greater freedom of action uh, on issues like Karabakh uh, than they did before. Uh, because uh, the West is looking at uh, Armenia as being almost completely in the Russian orbit. President Barack Obama has uh, less than two years left in office. How do you assess the U.S. policy toward post-Soviet region in the, in the upcoming two years, uh, 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 in particular with regard to Azerbaijan? How would you describe the American policy? First, I would note that there has been a great deal of continuity in American policy over four American presidential administrations uh, in the post-Soviet space, and particularly in the Caucasus. The administration of Bush Sr., uh, two administrations of Bill Clinton, two terms of, 
uh, George Bush and now two terms of Barack Obama, there have been a, there's been almost complete continuity of policy. Uh, and I think there will be a good deal of continuity of policy beyond the Obama administration in whatever American presidential uh, administration follows that. Uh, I think the notion that somehow this is about American domestic politics is quite incorrect. Uh, if you look at the principal players in the U.S. government, whether in the diplomatic service or uh, in the Pentagon, who deal with the Caucasus, uh, they have absolutely no relationship to American domestic partisan politics. You see many of the same faces recurring regardless of whether the White House is held by Republicans or Democrats. I do think that uh, a key uh, factor for the remaining two years of the Obama administration will be the gradual winding down to a very low level of the American direct participation in Afghanistan. Uh, this means that uh, the role of Azerbaijan in American policy will go down. Uh, as international energy markets have dramatically changed uh, with uh, the United States becoming the much greater uh, producer uh, of oil and gas than it was a few years ago, with the international price of oil having gone down so much, uh, regional petroleum uh, hydrocarbon suppliers in the Caspian play a much less uh, important role in American geopolitical thinking uh, as well. Uh, so in, in both of these factors, whether the, if you look at the things which have, been, have made Azerbaijan important to Washington in the last 10, 12 years, those have tended to be uh, the response to 9-11, uh, which is to say the American war in Afghanistan, and then uh, international energy markets. And in both of those factors, I think uh, uh, America's eyes are turning away from the Caucasus in general and from Azerbaijan in particular. In recent weeks, there has been a flare-up of violence on the contact line between the Azerbaijani and Armenian forces. There has been some casualties. Uh, do you see a risk for the resumption of military conflict? I wouldn't say an, an immediate risk of resumption of large-scale armed conflict, but there are a number of factors that are worrisome. There has, of course, been violence uh, between Armenia and Azerbaijan in the more than two decades since the ceasefire, which ended the First Karabakh War. Uh, th that violence has become more regular, more frequent, uh, and more lethal. In addition, it's no longer a question of just violence along the line of contact, but of violence along the border between the two republics, uh, including the border with uh, Nakhichevan. Uh, so this is not just a question of a danger or resumption of violence over Karabakh, but of violence between Azerbaijan and Armenia in general. Third, given the huge arms race that has been going on between the two republics in the Caucasus in recent years, any violence that would start to escalate could become extremely destructive uh, and extremely uh, lethal very, very quickly, which would increase the risk that it would get out of control. And finally, there is just the changed overall geopolitical situation in response to Russia's actions in Crimea uh, and in eastern Ukraine, which create the potential for uh, what one might call copycat actions. Uh, some people in Washington think that uh, Haidar, uh, uh, sorry, Il some people in Washington think that Ilham Aliyev looks at uh, Putin's actions on Crimea and says to himself, well, if Putin can get away with it, then I can get away with it. Uh, that the use of armed force can, can work for me is it seems to be working uh, for him. Uh, I think that's, that would be a very false uh, type of judgment. But nonetheless, uh, I think that it is true that any violence that's taking place between Armenians and Azerbaijanis uh, is now taking place in a more dangerous environment. Uh, I think for the time being, uh, political leaderships on both sides want to keep this violence localized uh, and at a low level. Uh, but as we all we know from history, these kinds of things uh, can take on a life of their own and get out of control, uh, even when political leaders don't want it. There are a lot of observers who talk about the importance of Azerbaijan for the West. How important is West for Azerbaijan? Unfortunately, decreasingly. Uh, this is, I think, a result of, one, the fact that Azerbaijan uh, is awash in so much money 
and that money has had such a uh, corrosive and corrupted uh, impact on uh, much of what's going on in the country. Second, because the political leadership uh, of Azerbaijan, and I don't mean just uh, Mr. Aliyev and his immediate associates, but the entire ruling elite, are increasingly inward-looking, isolated, and detached from much contact with uh, the outside world. And finally, I think this that uh, Azerbaijan uh, considers itself to be much more important uh, in the global scheme of things uh, and in the priorities of the West, in particular of the United States, than it actually is. Uh, I think the United States does Azerbaijan no favors by pretending that Azerbaijan is as important in American priorities today as it was five years ago or ten years ago. It's not. Uh, this has to do with the, the reduction in the priority of the Caucasus region in general uh, in, uh, in American policy, uh, but of Azerbaijan in particular because of the changing energy markets uh, and in the declining American participation in Afghanistan. Uh, I think uh, those trends will probably continue so that five years from now, the Caucasus and Azerbaijan will be of less importance to the United States than they are today. But does Azerbaijan need the West? If Azerbaijan wishes to escape from the current path that it's on, which is being essentially a petroleum-fueled uh, autarky uh, and autocracy, then yes, I think it does need the West. Uh, this is why the West reached out to Azerbaijan and the other regional countries in the aftermath of the breakup of the Soviet Union. Uh, but if, in fact, uh, Azerbaijan, as a political culture, uh, decides that it's rich enough uh, and it's independent enough that it feels it doesn't have to accommodate uh, to European uh, or American uh, priorities or sensitivities, then it can go its own way. The problem is, is that a relatively small country located in between Iran and Russia may find in the future that it needs big friends. Uh, and in the future, it may find that it does not have them.